Hi everyone, welcome to Hub Force Live with myself, Thomas. And Victor. Today we have a bit of a conversation around the buying process, some of the pains that come with buying and selling, and have a bit of discussion about everything in between. From both perspectives, actually, from the sales um, executive perspective and from the buyer or customer. Exactly right. So I've got a, a couple of questions written down here, actually. So uh, the right. first one is, what are you doing to get your value proposition across to your prospects? I mean, following the initial demo, when you've spoken to the prospect yeah. and they've shown some interest, they say, send me some more information. At that point, you know, we're all using email these days, aren't we? We're adding attachments to the email, PowerPoints, maybe some custom videos we've done, maybe a little presentation, and then some text just to explain what the solution is, and maybe some pricing as well, right? And we're giving that over to them. The main issues that I find getting value across that way is that how are they going to share that internally with their colleagues? So if they buy into it and they go, yep, yeah, this is a great, this is a great solution. They've done a demo with you. They understand everything. At that point, when they share it with, with their manager, with their director, how do they then sell it again internally? So how do you turn them into your champion? So it's not just a problem of getting value across to your prospect. It's how you can continue that flow of information beyond the prospect and help them sell it to their manager or director internally. And there aren't a lot of options right now to do that. The main thing is to do as well as you can on the calls and bring in any decision makers onto those uh, video conferences that you're running or face-to-face -face presentations. You need to get those people that are making decisions in those environments where you can build connection and trust with them. So in a nutshell, you have to turn your prospect into a seller. Yeah. And unfortunately in enterprise sales, you can't always rely on the person you're speaking to, to, to sell the product well. So you can be the best salesperson in the world, but your prospect might not be. They're, probably, they're most likely not gonna be, right? If they're working in manufacturing, they're working in IT, they're working in pharma, you know, they're not salespeople. So how do they then convince their managers and directors to make purchasing decisions? It's like a broken telephone. Yeah, they're not gonna say the same things in the same way and to get that value across to them so clearly that they can present the same value to their managers internally, that's one of the huge challenges of enterprise sales. In regards to like yourself, when you're looking for new vendors, so let's say to you, you're buying a new product or service from someone online. Obviously we have lots of things that we, uh, we buy for the business. What, what, do you, what do you think about or what do you look at when you're evaluating new vendors? So uh, that's true. We have actually bought uh, quite a few licenses for different subscriptions. Yeah. The HR, CRM system, you know, we were managing all of our customers, the customer success software. Before we had like an in-house ticketing solution that we bought, um, like another one, you know, an outsourced one. And um, every time, I would pay attention to their website first and see whether it's sleek. Yeah. Whether it makes sense. I would pay attention to the footer. And I don't know, I don't know, maybe some people don't pay attention to this, but I do. I look whether they have any like legal section. Do they have the cookies and privacy yeah. policy? If it's just like the company name and the year, LTD like copyright protected. To me it just says that this is like a cheap website that they've built like so you, so you really pay attention to the website first yeah i do this is the first impression okay but, um that's the first impression when i actually find out about the that business okay they go to their website um i guess initially i do the research in google mm -hmm. try to like search for like the top lists of vendors i go on captera yeah uh g2 uh and trust radius g2 out of all i think is probably the best tool uh that i've used myself like the reviews seem to be quite genuine because they all have to like sign in via LinkedIn. And I look at the best reviews, but I also look at the worst reviews. Not like, I understand that some companies may have customers who are dissatisfied. That's not the reason why I look at them. I just want to see like what exactly was the problem. So like, what are the weak points of this vendor? So I use this information to try and shortlist them. And then the next thing is, you know, I try and book some demos. But some products you can just sign up and get a free trial and play with the product yeah, yeah. straight away. Uh, but with others, you know, it's it's quite a long process. So you want to book a demo and actually see the product. 
But what sometimes turns out is they reach out to me and they say, okay, we're going to have like a 15, 20, 30 minute conversation. Yeah. And every single time they want to qualify me. And these guys, they always try and qualify you, like how much they can sell it to for. Yeah. I do find it a bit annoying sometimes because yeah, imagine you have to speak to like five, 10 different vendors. They don't actually show me the product in this only like on this 30 minute call. Uh -huh. Whether it's a Zoom call or phone call, it doesn't matter. They just don't, sh they don't actually share the screen. And all I want to see is the actual product. So you'll pay attention to the, the website, the reviews on G2, Captera, whatever else you're looking for. And then when you do book a call and you shortlist and you speak to them, you're getting frustrated straight away. They're trying to qualify you. And you're saying sometimes you get to look at the demo straight away and, and, and sometimes you don't. So once you get to that stage, what are you paying attention to then? So once you're on the call with the salesperson, they've got the product in front of you you're on, a, on a live screen share, what, what are you paying attention to on the next stage? So I, I would normally prepare a list of the key points um, and like key features that I would like to cover, mm -hmm. like the sort of the needs analysis. I do prepare that in advance. Yeah. Um, it does get a bit easier. Like once you have one or two demos and you've already seen some products, you sort of know what questions to ask on the next demo, like the third or the fourth demo. Okay. I mean, all salespeople are pretty good usually like working for this big enterprise SaaS company. Okay. Uh, in most cases, 78% of the time, uh, you know, I, I like the communication. It's fine. It seems like the product is quite good. Yeah. But then the problem I found was when I asked them to send me some information, because I don't make decisions myself, you know, I've got other colleagues in a team responsible for certain things. They need to look at it as well. So I call the shots, but I still want to hear their opinion and what do they think about this product. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to this point and I want to actually share some information with them, I ask them, can you send me some more information? Um, very rarely I get like good quality information that's actually relevant. Okay. But often they just send me something generic and I don't want generic. I want something that's relevant to a B2B growing SaaS, not some like massive enterprise company. I don't need those integrations, don't need those features. I just need the, the basics. And they just seem to be, you know, always sending very generic stuff. Well, like I asked them for, for like case studies, which are specific to our industry, our business. Yeah. And then they just send any case study. I mean, I could just go on their website and read about it if I really wanted to. The whole idea of us having that initial demo is to learn about our business and then send me the information that's relevant. Yeah. So when you mentioned that point, you know, it's very important, I think, to keep it relevant after the demo. And so you have enough materials to share with other colleagues. So what you're saying is actually the salesperson isn't really a key factor in your decision-making process. It's your review before. So, you know, about the website, how much effort they're putting into market the product, uh, and then the reviews. And then when you speak to the salesperson, you've already got a list of things that you want to see from the tool itself. And then after that, the information you want is value driven. So they send you an email, they send you information after the call. That all needs to be super relevant to your buying needs. Yeah, like right. I, I understand why they're there. I understand that they need to sell this product to me and I'm interested in buying. You know, it's black and white. I get it. Okay. Um, as long as they're not too pushy, you know, I would say they're pretty much all the same to me. Okay. And then off the back of that, let's say you had five vendors that you were speaking to. What are some of the key decision-making factors that you would have on the table that you use to evaluate these different vendors? So why would one stand out more to you than the other? Is it, is it, is it product always? Is it, is it price? Is it the salesperson? Is it how much the rapport they built? What are some of the main decision-making factors? I wouldn't remove the price completely. Like the product needs to be sleek. Yeah. Like in terms of UX, it needs to be a good product. Otherwise, it's just not worth mm -hmm. investing time. But let's say the ones I've shortlisted are all pretty good products anyway. So they're all going to tick the box. They all tick the box. Okay. Uh, the price is usually quite similar. Yeah. Um, so it's quite hard to differentiate based yeah. on price sometimes. Um, what does matter to me is how much they actually care. Right. Like how much they want me to become their client. Are we like going to be just a number, you know, in their book, or in their CRM, whatever that is, or? You know, do they actually have a good onboarding process? Do they have their customer 
success managers? Like, do they have like this playbook in place? Yeah. And, and do they actually care? And you can usually tell when you ask them those questions, if they can show you examples yeah. on the screen, yeah. like that's how we go for the process or they can send me something where I can see like, what is your implementation process like? Not some Excel um, or, you know, some, yeah. you know, really like simple diagram in Miro, which anyone can make. But I mean, you can tell that this is a professional document and all the steps are like clear. To me, it just, you know, it says that they have a training process internally for like educating their own account managers. So chances are they do actually care and they will take me through the, you know, through those processes properly and I can get the best value. Because all products are the same, but it's how will you educate me and help me get that value from the product in the shortest period of time possible? Okay, okay. So what? So let's say, for example, some salespeople are watching this now and they're thinking about, you know, what they can do to improve their sales process. You're saying that a lot of your decision is around how well they treat you as a potential buyer. So your buyer journey is really important to you making a decision, much more than product or price. 100%. How much, how much effort did they put in okay. into preparing the proposal? Some of them, actually, it's quite funny, but uh, I come across this all the time. They call me up or they email me something. Actually, it's right on time. I actually do need this product. And then when I ask them to send me the proposal, it takes like two, three days. And then I'm the one who have to you know, chase them. And I'm like, you guys want to make money. I'm interested in this product. Why can't you like send it to me, you know, within a day? Yeah, because you're in your you're in your buying phase then, aren't you? You want to make a decision, you want to evaluate things, and three, four, five days, what well, you've probably started evaluating other vendors already. Especially when it comes to like Thursday or Friday. Yeah. If you don't send it to me by like Friday, because the weekend, yeah. you've got a family, kids, you know, yeah. just forget stuff. So by Monday, Tuesday, I will have forgotten about the um, you know the name of the company. And unless they send me something, then I can sort of remember it. You know, like making something memorable, yeah. like the material they yeah. share. I would say that create, like you sort of just remember their company name. Or oh, they send me like, you know, this cool presentation or this cool product video. And it wasn't just generic video, which I find on their YouTube. It was actually specifically the things I asked. Mm. And they sent me like a very short three, five minute video. I can watch, I can share with my colleagues. It's not like I need to sit down for half an hour. It's really short and it covers exactly the aspects I asked for. Yeah. I asked about, and to me, that proves value that this person actually cared about what, what we have discussed on the call. And then based on that dedicated some time to prepare and cover the points and address them, the ones that, you know, I've asked about. Yeah. To me, that's like, I'm sold on that, to be honest. So another question is, so we have, we have people on our team that obviously go and evaluate vendors and then they bring them to us to think about as potential, right? All I get uh, normally from uh, potential people that are selling products to us that our team have looked at, when they send information through, we get like a template email, don't we? We never met that person. We, we understand what the product is because our, our employees told us about it, but the only understanding of value is in an email. Right, we can read the email. We can see what they've got from from a literature perspective. We can we can read about it. Sometimes they'll put in a bit of a video, but the level of understanding and rapport doesn't pass through our employees to us. No, right, because they spend more time talking to this guy. Yeah, they spend half an hour, forty minutes on the phone to that salesperson. That salesperson, as I said earlier, could be the best salesperson in the world. You know, our employees spoken to them, and our employees completely convinced it's the right solution. But then that employee comes to speak to myself or you, and then they say, well, right, we've got this, this product or this service that we want to use. Maybe it's for marketing, maybe it's for an SEO agency, something that we want to uh, grow our lead channels with or something. What's the differentiator? Well, how do we know what this company does that's different to anyone else? How do we know that the service or the onboarding or the support from them is going to be their standout feature? So this is super important to you as a buyer but as the decision maker, you when you receive this information from the vendor directly, you know that they're trustworthy, you like them, you, you feel like you could use their service based on the, the information sure. that you built with them. But how do you get that from your employee? So your employee looks at the services for you, 
and then goes to their manager or their director and say, I found this product, it's great. What then? How do they transmit that value from, from what the salesperson said all the way through to you? One hour or uh, that's best case scenario. Worst yeah. case scenario, a two hour Zoom recording. I don't have time to watch. I'd rather watch Netflix to be honest in the evening and spend some nice time. I don't want to watch a one hour, two hour video recording where they talk for all those features. I might actually like stop paying attention when they start actually mentioning the things that do matter for the business. So unless someone goes and edits that video and makes it short, you know, it just doesn't make sense. Okay. So you're it's saying that an email, email wouldn't cut it? No. Okay. I'd have to have a deep conversation with that employee about the product and find out more. So they have to do a presentation to you? They'd probably schedule another call with their vendor and just okay. go through the whole thing again. So they like, so the employee would have to get you to buy in enough to either go on a call with that business or yeah. we'll sit down with them one-on-one -on -one and let them sell it to you. Okay. So they have to convince me why, let's say they're three, five vendors. Why should I spend my time to speak to this two guy? I'm not, I'm not going to speak to all five. No. I just don't have the time. So the other three will definitely miss out. So it, it really depends on how well that employee can sell those two vendors to Yeah. What do you think frustrates the buyer the most in the sales process? And I don't know if you have some examples from your previous experience where you were about to lose the deal. Yeah, so it's interesting. So obviously I sell B2B SaaS software to enterprise, so enterprise businesses, but I also get sold to as well by other SaaS B2B salespeople. And it's interesting being on both sides of the coin because you can see maybe what you're doing wrong through what they're doing and i'd say one of the most frustrating things is when they just try and get value for themselves so when they email you to find out are you interested have you looked at product videos information case studies reviewed the pricing have you shared it internally you know have you done this when have you done that you know what do you think right this is value for them this very, is very selfish <laughs> yeah it's selfish because they're going how likely am i going to close this deal how likely is it I'm going to close this deal? Uh, what value could I potentially sell it at? What's their buyer interest levels? What's their buying intent? And this is all benefits for them. So even if I am interested in buying the product, I'm not going to give them all that information because the more positive reaction I give them, the price isn't going to go down. The price is probably going to get a discount after that. <laughs> There's no discount. I say, hey, Mr. Salesperson, that all the information you sent over is brilliant. I've looked at it all. It's fantastic. Exactly what we need. I'll share it all internally for you. I'll do your job, no problem at all. Uh, he'll go and say, great, here's the price. Ask for a discount, there's no chance. Okay. So I would say, rather than just sending me emails to find out how I could potentially be your next customer, build value for you, that's the, that's the most frustrating thing. If the salesperson can switch that and say, here's the value that we offer, here's some more benefits in line with our conversation that we had, uh, do you feel that, you know, giving this information to someone else might help you understand the product better, come on a call? I don't know, something that is beneficial to me as the buyer, right? And when I get sold to it, I certainly do learn a lot about the sales process because it puts you in the, in the buyer seat. And so rather than sending out all these emails and messages or phone calls to, to external companies and saying, you know, are you interested? Are we on the short list? You know, are we, are we top vendor for you when are you looking to buy you know all these questions they just they just benefit me right i can just send more and more value but i think like you what you said earlier is that one of the most important things is, is building that rapport that trust showing them there will be a good support good implementation a good process or a high touch process that helps you feel comfortable buying that product or service from them do you know uh, it brings me to to another interesting point when these other companies uh try to obviously sell to me sometimes i feel really bad like i actually like their company mm. and i actually do need it it's on my to-do list yeah but i'm just so busy i've got like so so much stuff sometimes i've got like calls back mm. to back with my team members and i feel bad like they keep emailing me trying to follow up like they don't actually know that i am genuinely interested in this i just don't have the time right now yeah it is on my to-do list i do need to discuss it with one of the colleagues 
and just basically get on with it and purchase and, and try it out. Yeah. But I just don't have the time. Or I start typing the email yeah. to let them know. And then someone else like texts me on Slack or asks me to go on a call. I just forget to click like send where it goes into my draft. Yeah. I just literally forget about it. You've got a whole job to do aside, yeah. right? So you buying something might be high on your priority list, but you know, you've got operations to run all day. You've got a business with people to manage. So how, how are we meant to sit there and fully evaluate a product, go through that whole buying cycle and then do our whole job as well. So I guess one of the main things is around how can, how can we make the salesperson's job easier so that they can share more value with us as quickly as possible and for us to understand the value of what they're offering. So, you know, in today's world, we're used to receiving and processing information really quickly. So we watch films, yeah, hour and a half, two hours long, but you're not going to sit there and watch a two hour sales demonstration, right? <laughs> because you're just not going to spend that much time on it. You don't know how valuable it is. Quentin Tarantino has got a good past in building good movies, right? Thomas Bellamy is not so famous in the film world. <laughs> so I'm not going to get someone's attention for two hours, just creating a video recording of my product for them to watch. So. You know, new products have come on the market that allow you to create short, small videos. Obviously nothing that we have, but getting those small bits of information across in one to maximum five minutes and sharing that with all the relevant information about our pain, stuff that we've, uh, the stuff that we need solving and how they're gonna help solve that problem. All of that really short video. I know if I was getting sent something like that, that was hyper-personalized, interesting, but also something that I could share easily that would help ease the pain as the buyer and obviously you know let's say i'm bringing something to you or you'll bring something to me that one of us is interested in you could say hey thomas or i could say hey victor take a look at this video it shows them what we've been talking about the problems we're facing and this is their solution we haven't got to get on a call with them but we can understand maybe the pricing we can get some testimonials short video you know in less than five minutes we've got a full value proposition something like that would help certainly me a lot in making in making buyers making making the buying journey easy for me and then you know how do we how do we flip that over as well so if we think about that for us selling to other businesses you know we need to take that on board as well how are we going to make sure that the value is delivered as quickly as possible because we know how we like being sold to right but i think it's also about like reaching out uh to your prospects like at the right time because i sometimes i would sit there look at the proposal like on my phone yeah. And I'm like, actually, this is quite interesting. This is quite interesting. But I just don't have the time to come back to them mm. and prepare whole emails, like trying to negotiate the deal and say like, oh, I'm, I really like this plan. I think that, that would be suitable. And they always want to go on a call. I just don't have time to go on the call. But I just sometimes wish that they knew that I looked at it. Because otherwise they just, they just call me and they're like, did you share it with your colleagues? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I did. And like, it's as if they don't trust me or something. Like as if they don't believe me, they're like, for sure. Yeah. So I'm like, what do you want me to do? Do you want me like to forward you an email that I sent to my colleague proving you that I've actually shared it with them? Like, how do I prove to you that I shared it? Yes, we- But how is, but how is that valuable for the salesperson even to know? Let's say you found a new CRM tool and you said to me, you said, hey, Thomas, I found a new, a new CRM tool and you, and you sent me that email and, I, uh, and you actually did send it to me. The only real value in that exchange is if I've actually spent time in that email, gone through the product, watched the video, understood it. So that salesperson asking you, did you share it with your colleague? Well, you did, but what if I didn't even look at it? That's How's that salesperson even going to know? Yeah, you did share it, but I didn't open the email. It's still in my to do. It. Yeah, well, that's one of the problems, isn't it? I've got another one here. Um, what do you think about emails? like using emails in sales in general? I mean, emails have been around since what, 95? Yeah. Something around 96, I think. I think they're older than me. <laughs> no, definitely younger than you. <laughs> You're not tricking anyone. They, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, emails have been around for a long time. Electronic mail, right? It's something you can send immediately arrives in the person inbox. I'd say the main limitations around email for me are size attachments, getting into spam filters and being able to send a, a large amount of information clearly. You know, I've got to write text in there. I've got to add attachments. You know, I can keep it all as, as minimal as possible.
But at the end of the day, that's what they're going to afford internally. So there's a really fine balance between overloading with too much information and putting too little in there that we don't stand out as a, as a potential. And what about, and what about the use of WhatsApp, like Facebook Messenger, like all this, all these like chat messages, like I personally found in Portugal and Spain, even like businesses, they don't send the emails. Surprisingly, never ask you for that. Just ask her for the phone number, but then they, they never actually call you because uh. their English system very good. So they just send you everything on WhatsApp. They just Google translate everything. Yeah. And I actually found it quite, you know, quite comfortable like using this method of communication because all the information is super concise and they can send me like links to some stuff that I can look at. What's WhatsApp developed business WhatsApp, right? Yeah. And so you can have AI automation chats with people on WhatsApp. So you can say, I'm checking in or I'm coming or when, when, when's my latest checkout? They can have an automated support response. And, and because we use WhatsApp for day-to-day -day, uh, activity, for those uh, customer to business purchases, they can improve that process effectively, yeah, because it increases the speed of the communication back and forth. But in terms of, you know, how are they gonna share information that you've shared on WhatsApp with their with director? You can't go on your phone, take a PDF that I've sent on WhatsApp and forward it to their director to say, look at this. And it's 25 megabytes or something. <laughs> yeah. If, first of all, the director probably will think, how'd you get my number? So at the end of the day, we all, we all go back to email. And then what we do in email is we find different ways of leveraging email to get what we want across. So we've got loads of new tools that we can put into email to deliver that value. So you've obviously got attachments, you've got varieties of links that can take you anywhere uh, on, on the internet. That's true, but... Are you going to send like one link or are you going to send like 10 links to different like, you know, products where you've uploaded some information that you want your prospect to look at? Say you want to send them like Notion or, or a G2 crowd review. Yeah, G2 crowd review. Like, let's say you uploaded a video. You don't want to send obviously a video. So you're going to upload it to Vimeo. You don't want to put it on YouTube because you don't, you don't want to make it public. So you upload it to Vimeo to keep it private and share it with a, with a potential client. And then you end up sending them in an email, some text, Vimeo link. A call recording. Call, call recording from Zoom. And then Notion. And then God knows what. Maybe, maybe a G2. link. Yeah. So it's like four or five links. Embed a Vimeo you've created or a Vidyard or a Loom. You've got that in there as well. Maybe a YouTube. <laughs> it's like it ends up being like a long list of links. Yeah. So you're trying to deliver the most value as, po as, mu as much as possible, but it's overloading them. And if you don't do enough, they might feel like, well, I haven't got enough information or you don't care enough. It's a thin line, isn't it? It's a very thin, thin line. Time. Yeah, I know, I know salespeople which will send an email and it will be one line, maybe one attachment, and that's it. That's all they'll send. They don't want to overload the customer. The customer comes back and asks questions, but then you've got this back and forth interaction continuously trying to give information. It's good to increase those touch points up to that magic eight number where you're more likely to close the deal. But you are then going back and forth again and again with maybe 10, 20 prospects. What about other stakeholders in the business? They all have a different agenda. Everyone has their own questions. Mm. So they then, like imagine you answered all the questions and then the IT guys come in or the finance guys, like they decide to ask you about something. So it's like, it never rents basically. Yeah, I've got a good friend. I mean, we're, we're, we're selling LMS now to lots of different companies and they've come back with, okay, you know, send us a, a product video. Okay, now send us your ISO certification and your, and your insurance policies yeah. and everything that someone else wants to check. And then someone else wants to double check you have the right integrations and they work and they send you an email. And then the directors get involved and they want to see the product as well. And you've got to go on another video to show them or another demo call to show them as well. But you can't go back to them and say, guys, can you sort this out internally and send us a list of 20 questions from everyone in the team? Well, this is what I want to be rude. This is request for proposal, isn't it? This is what happens. They have so many questions and so much need. They end up sending an RFQ or an RFP with 30, 40 different questions in there asking for all these different types of compliance documents and information. And you end up filling it out for two hours. And the salesperson goes, well, that's, you know, a good opportunity, but do I want to invest that time? You know what happened once? I sent... I sent some questions, uh, Alin, to a company, and they basically sent me a link to their Dropbox. And they're like, basically, here's our website, case studies you can find in here. There's our YouTube channel, this is our Dropbox. Everything's in there. 
And I'm like, you open the Dropbox and there are like hundreds of files in there. And they're selling to you. And they're selling to me. And they're not all relevant. Yeah. And it's just like tens of different folders and hundreds of different files. And I mean, this approach to me is like basically. <laughs> yeah, if you're really arrested, you're going to put the effort in. Yeah. Exactly. All the questions are answered. Here's the link. Find the answers, basically. Oh, I can't imagine. So we also, we, we take part in RFQs and RFPs sometimes for businesses that we want to sell to, but every vendor then has to invest 40, 50 minutes, two hours filling out his RFPs to compete for the same business. You know, it's not, it's not a scalable thing. You can spend a week on a tender sometimes, but that's because that customer goes, I know exactly what I want. So they don't ask. Can you imagine how much time they spend preparing those questions? Okay, you spend a week or two filling this out, mm. but then they spend like a month Going through all the <laughs> speaking to different stakeholders. Going through all the answers. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a nightmare, isn't it? <laughs> well, this is the problem with B2B SaaS sales. You either go right to the RFQ or you keep it super simple and try and have basic touch points and then go on calls as many as many times as you can. But it depends on the size of the organization and how they buy from you at the end of the day. And the salesperson's task now is to find a sweet spot in the middle that works for the enterprise sales that are complex and this information. And the other side, the guys that want to send the simple emails out, maybe the smaller deals, but again, still need to send the relevant information across. So we're stuck in this paradox now. So somewhere in the middle would be great, but hopefully some solutions will be coming out at some point that address this. And something sneaky tells me they will be. <laughs> but we'll, we'll come to, to this later. Yeah, yeah, we'll come to that later. <laughs> Thanks everyone for watching. It's been a great 30 minutes here with Victor. I feel like we've, we've covered some really important points in the sales process for both the buyer and the seller. And we will continue to do some more videos. So keep in touch, like, comment, subscribe, and <laughs> in the comment, yeah, all that good stuff. Thanks for now. And the bell over here, <laughs> subscribe. <laughs>